what is going on y'all <clears throat> carolina dad here taking it a little bit slower a little bit slower than i normally do y'all know i like to get on here rush through an episode at least that's what it feels like for me tons of prep work and just trying to compile all these ideas and put them together so that i can deliver an episode but today I am taking it a little bit slower to talk about the press conference from earlier this week. So if you follow me on Instagram, I already gave like an eight or nine minute dissertation on how I felt about the press conference. And then, of course, time passes and I've listened to a lot of people talk about it. It made national media news, primarily with... ESPN, and they even mentioned Scott Fowler. I was listening to the morning show on Sportsman Life. They changed the morning show so many times I could barely remember the name. But I listened to it, and they called out the fact that Scott Fowler did not get a question. For those brand new as a Panthers fan, all I'm going to tell you is go back to the Matt Rule press conference from last year when he was fired say the Matt Rule conference, the press conference where Tepper announced that Matt Rule was fired and watch the interaction with Scott Fowler and David Tepper. Fowler starts off by saying, when did you decide to make this decision? Did you wake up today? And it set Tepper off. He starts in saying like, yeah, I read your columns, Fowler. I know what you have to say. I know what your opinions are. So coming into this, we, Panthers Nation, a lot of Panthers Nation, expected this to be a longer press conference. It technically was a 10-minute press conference extended by about three minutes when Tepper answers a question related to Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, moving up in the draft. But what was most surprising about this entire thing was just the PR team. And I've heard a lot of people talk, you know, is it Tepper's men, who, whoever it was, limiting the questions to the folks in there that they wanted. So they silenced the Gina, the Carolina Blitz or Keep Blitz in the team, Scott Fowler. And a few others, a few others that are there every day, gave a question to the Charlotte Business Journal when this all has to do with football. And there were just uh, a few things, but it's it's funny as I sit here and just reflect on it. And there are so many people just upset because in this presser, he talked about MLS, he talked about concerts, talked about high school football games, the events that he's brought. And you know what? People are ticked off, and rightfully so, as I like to say. But I went back, folks. I went back to the very beginning, very, very beginning of Tepper's very first presser. And the writing was on the wall. Like, this is a business. He wants to make money. Winning kind of feels secondary. But I'll start off with what he said. I'm thrilled to be here. It's incredibly exciting. A great organization, a great football organization, and it's a new day. Hopefully we'll have bigger and better things to come, including Super Bowl championships in the future. Like, yeah, that's that's very good. They asked him if he planned to make changes organizationally. You know, it's a little too early. And then they get into some of the logistics around the stadium, the facilities on ideas to potentially build and expand the practice field around Bank of America Stadium. He acknowledges that the Panthers practice facility is subpar. Then you go into this conversation about competing with other organizations. And he starts to talk about sports gambling. He starts to talk about the two states, one team mantra, you know, understanding North Carolina and South Carolina ensuring that you're you know satisfying the needs of both of those teams but at the end the end is where it gets fun because it's right here 
He said, so I'm thinking about those sort of things. Everything goes hand in hand in this community. It's not just the business things. It's also a matter of things like high school football games, check. And I think high school state championships should be played in that stadium. Now that part hasn't happened, but high school games, check. That's what I think because this, because that is part of the community, bringing in the community. I also think there should be, wait for it. I don't want to screw up the field. Oh, I already did turf. There should be more bigger events there. Like the right type of concerts in the stadium. There really hasn't been. Oh, check. So I want to utilize the stadium for the community because I think it's important as a it being as being a member of the community. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it was there from the start. And there was one other thing. Yeah, this is where it gets really fun. You know, the the question was, and I didn't answer, uh, go through, but changes around on changes Tepper could look to make organizationally. He said, well, I don't know if I quite have 24 hours yet that I own this team. So I'm still evaluating things. In general, like I just said, I like to have an open environment, a one big family environment where everybody feels safe like a family. That means you can come up and talk to people, and that's going to be just openness on all sides of the organization, both the football side and the business side. <laughs> you just laugh at this stuff now, man. You just do. So he gets up there and he goes on and on and he says, oh, we are a business person. I can talk to you about the business side. And this is a meeting in which the head coach of a football team in the second year of back-to-back -back years, we've had a coach fired in the middle of the season. He also talks about patience and his presser. He talks about whoever this next coach is having them speak at his eulogy in 20 to 30 years, hopefully 40 years. And I, 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 man, the, you just, I feel for the PSL owners. I feel for the people that are there. I even listened to a podcast where a guy said he would much rather travel to an away game because, you know, if you think about going to Bank of America today, it, it almost is an away game and he would actually rather be away so he doesn't have to like feel that, you know, hey, at least this is normal because I actually am not at my home stadium. I heard people complaining too just about the Cowboys game, what one with the stadium takeover. The thing though, people were getting upset about how many Cowboys fans invaded and parking and pricing, like all that's natural. That's natural business that comes with that. So like complaining that a good football team or a well-known or America's team comes into town and prices go up and you can't find parking and tickets are sold out and tickets are $200 more than normal. That is nothing to do with the state of the team. Like those things are going to happen. So like that to me, I don't really buy into that. Now, one of the things, and I talked about it in kind of the, the eight minute video I put together was the veto power. And I joke about the veto power that Tepper brought up and he brought it up because he goes through the presser and he says that it was everyone's decision, continuing to emphasize everyone involved that the, the decision was Bryce Young. However, at the very end of it, he is the one who, who holds veto power. And I heard it talked about you don't bring up that you have veto power unless you plan to use it. You don't. It's hard to imagine someone saying, oh yeah, I've got this thing that I can do, but I don't use it. I don't ever use it. And also try to say, well, these decisions don't come to me until like the final hour. Really? You're not sitting there involved when you're, you know, before this, you have meetings, weekly meetings with Frank Reich on a week, you know, every Monday, whatever it was, or Tuesday. And now you're going to say that you're not involved in these things. So yeah, um, there's, there's not a lot, not a lot that I can say. You look at this though, and I take a step back because I'm frustrated just like everyone else. But at the same time, there are some positives, whether you believe it, that are coming through out of this situation. One, he's, you know, he hasn't, it hasn't worked yet. 
whether that is because he is too involved or not, you know, you can make your own assumptions and opinions. It hasn't worked. He went with the trendy hire in Matt Rule. Didn't pan out. We'll let that ride for, you know, what, two and a half years. You turn around that, you know, because that didn't work and you say, well, I'm going to go ahead and get the most experienced staff known to man. And you go back and you read some of the columns on why he was picked with the, the follow-up pressers. And it all had to do with how prepared Frank Reich was, his connections in the industry and the people that he was going to bring, speaking of the coaching staff. And he did those things. And like you, I went back and listened to my recording. Was I a fan of Reich at first? No, I that was not my first initial hire. Now I was just starting the pod. So it was hard to have a true opinion, I have a much bigger opinion coming around this time. But when I was kind of thinking about Reich and what he can bring, I was like, yeah, I guess, you know, he he's going to figure this out. Fortunately, he did not. It just, it just didn't work. But on paper, everything made sense. And it was like, okay, he's got the, the coaching staff, the experience. And you know what? Tepper saw what he saw 11 games in and he made the decision. He made the decision to go ahead and cut it. Now, other people are going to say, well, when is Fitter going to be let go? And I, I don't know. And the other larger question with the grand scheme of this thing. So when you talk about good and bad, I think it is good that he realized it wasn't working, made a decision, move on. You do start to run into this, I guess, uh, situation where you have other players or teams who may not want to come here because of that. Like whether or not he is or is not that involved. I mean, there were reports came out this past week, one that Tepper was giving plays to Reich for, for him to install in the offense and run. I can't validate that. That's true that he wanted him to run more RPOs. I cannot validate that. That's true. You listen to the locker room press conferences today and one players most of the players didn't even know this happened like they weren't in the building they found out through social media which is kind of the state of the entire world but as you hear some of the players talk i don't think anyone was shocked people are moving on it is a business everyone understands it's a business there's accountability that's being taken across the board offense defense everyone coaches is saying that you know it's their fault that he got fired or part of it which i agree but you know, just seeing the progression or lack of progression with Bryce and yeah. So, you know, where we go from here, I don't know that Tepper is not going to be involved. People will say, let's hire or have him hire a search firm, which I agree. That would be the greatest thing in the world is for him to remove himself and hire a search firm, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. And I put this out there today. And I said, I'm not defending Tepper and or his involvement in the organization, but just food for thought. If you were going out and buying a business, and, and in this case, let's make it reasonable, you're going out and buying a car wash, not a old 80s, 90s car wash, you know, the modern car wash, you come up, pay with the card, put it in neutral, slide through it, vacuum yourself. So one of those, just so just for reference, you're buying a car wash. We're going to assume you've never owned the business, that type of business before. And you come in, you start to have some issues. So you hire a mechanic, that mechanic doesn't work out. You hire an additional mechanic, that mechanic doesn't work out. Like things continue to break. They're not being fixed. And so eventually you're going to sit there and want to be involved. And the way I phrased it is you may not be able to go, and I'm not going to say you're going to sit here and be the one to fix it, but you may not be able to go in and fix whatever it is like the first time or even in the first few days, weeks, months, but getting in and actually understand the the business side and the operation side of what of this thing, which is let's say the car wash, you're going to be better prepared if something like that happens again and or better qualified to know which mechanic to hire moving forward. And so when we hear that Tepper is involved in these operations, like the other thing, man, I, I, don't have a, a big ego, but like a billionaire that buys a football team is going to want to be involved in that football team. And people getting upset saying that he should just be hands off. Like 
I, I liken it to the business. Like, think about it. If you, one, if you were a billionaire, yeah, that'd be great. But if you were in his shoes and you acquired a team, you're going to want to be involved. Like, I don't know that that's a good thing. And we've seen various models of this, this play out in ownership. You know, I, I messaged out to Mike K for the Charlotte Observer and said, I just asked him, like, do you, because he's covered Jacksonville and Philadelphia. I said, did you see this with other teams like ownership or like, or like Panthers fans just way overreact? And he's like, it's there. It's there with other teams. Like each team's got its own little quirks with ownership. And I think that's the other part of it is like, we are just so honed in and Tepper is saying the right things, doing the right things. It just hasn't worked. Now, the next, whatever we want to call this, five or six months from search, I guess it'll be less than that, but from searching for a new coach, searching probably for a new GM, it's going to be important to get this right. And I'll get into the names that are floated. One of them, Ben Johnson. Bit just like everywhere you turn, Ben Johnson, Ben Johnson. He did not turn down the Panthers job last year, folks. So like go out to the Detroit Lions website. He wanted to come back to Detroit to finish business. His name's going to come up. Kellen Moore interviewed. I'm not pegging him as, as a candidate right now. Frank Smith, offensive coordinator for the Dolphins. And then we get into the, the trendy names. One, Greg Olson. Greg Olson. I love Greg Olson. He's not going to be your your coach of the Carolina Panthers. I'm sorry, we're not pulling a Dion right now, and that's not a, a, a slight on Dion or Greg. Greg did come out today. You can go out and on the I think it was the Rich Eisen show. I, I probably got the show wrong, so sorry about that. You can go look it out. I posted it where he's talking through like if it was presented to him as an offer, absolutely he's going to take that. He is going to take that like. Duh, that's like a no brainer. It's like someone coming up to me and saying, Hey, do you want to go podcast for ESPN? Whatever it is, you know, be a a radio, whatever. Like, that's probably never going to happen. But it's like, Of course, I'm going to take that opportunity, man. And I think that's kind of how Greg phrased it. But we've got Bill Belichick's name being floated by a reporter in Boston with ties to Carolina saying it is likely that name's going to keep coming up. That I, I don't like Bill as the the hire for this team. He's shown over these last few years as he runs the dual head coach GM that he's kind of fallen off a little bit with some of his scouting and some of the decisions he's making on that team. It's hard for me to imagine him coming in here and riding the ship. I feel like it's a Mac Brown esque retirement plan more than anything which it sounds like we're just frank wright's retirement plan and all these other coaches who knows also bill's like in his 70s how is he going to be here for the next 20 years and then you know go to your your eulogy tepper throwing that out there people do have or have or are saying having bill belichick gives you know maybe he has someone that could step up to tepper put him in his place or bring all this knowledge that he has to level set and maybe Tepper understands things a little bit better and we get it on the right side. I don't know that Tepper would divide up or would not want to divide up head coach and GM though. That's the other, other kicker. Another name, Jim Harbaugh, everything that's happening at Michigan, his name's going to come up. It came up last year. I don't want it. I don't want him here. I don't want another retread. He had a success with the 49ers. He went all over to Michigan now he's got all the scandal stuff there. I don't no. I just don't want him, man. I want a younger coach that has the ability to lead this team. And I do think, you know, Tepper talked about patience and having patience. And like, how do you have patience when you're firing coaches in the middle of the season and back to back years? I I put out there that like we've hit rock bottom, man. We have hit the lowest of lows, worst team in the league, worst record. This is rock bottom. So I think as a fan base now, it's not like we're going to come out here next year and say we're going to win 10 games. You know, expectation for me is going to be like, what, four or five? Do we get five, six wins? And you progressively build on that. 
and you're, it's going to take a few years and you hope that you just get things right. And the other thing I'll say is the Cam Newton discussion. Cam Newton went on his, I think it was just his podcast. I don't know if his podcast, if he was on Busting with the Boys, but I did see the clip that the issue, part of the issue is with Tepper. And part of the issue with Tepper is the understanding, the dynamic of the NFL locker room and the continuity with the team and the players, coaches. And he talked about, you know, everything that happened with all the guys that were Thomas Davis, him, various other players, Khalil, that were let go or traded or cut, whatever it was, and how that kind of just ruined things. And since then, they've been trying to find that identity. And now we know there's really no identity in there. But keeping that cohesiveness with the team is important. And I think it'll be important for whoever we hire next or whoever is hired next, I should say. But Anyways, y'all, uh, man, it's been a, a, a crazy busy week for me and uh, I'm tired. This is podcast number four. So I'm, I'm signing off, signing out. Y'all have a good one.